Supreme Court has blocked restrictions on the abortion pill before restrictions that would have kicked in tonight at midnight. It involves the abortion drug Mifeprestone. The high court's order is only temporary and lasts until Wednesday. A Trump appointed federal judge in Texas ordered the suspension of the drug last week. An appeals court blocked part of the ruling earlier this week. So the Justice Department asked the Supreme Court to weigh in. The drug remains legal in Illinois with advocates on both sides watching developments. The bottom line is that everyone is making decisions about millions of people's bodies in this country, except for the people themselves. Those common sense safety regulations really made sure that women were safe. And over time, those were taken down. And now the court is saying that that has to be reinforced. The Chicago Abortion Fund says these rulings have put a strain on their already overwhelmed system. They've had a record-breaking number of people coming to Illinois to seek abortion so far this year. Senate Democrats calling for an investigation into new reports about Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas and his ties to a Republican mega-donor. A new ProPublica report found the GOP billionaire mega-donor Harlan Crow had purchased a home and two other properties in 2014 that belonged to Justice Thomas and his family. Thomas's mother still lives in one of those properties. Justice Thomas didn't disclose the sale of the property. Several ethics experts told ProPublica that that violates ethics laws. Crow told CNN he made the purchases at market rates with the hopes of turning the homes into a museum devoted to Clarence Thomas. Uh, Justice has not commented on the report. Joining us now to talk about the week in politics is WGN political analyst and host of the political report here on WGN, Paul Lesnick. Where to start? <laughs> yeah, before we get to Clarence Thomas, I want to go back to the abortion pill sure. because it seems to be going up this legal ladder that's getting more and more confusing. Uh, let's simplify it as best as we can to find out when a decision could be made and what it possibly Yeah, well, there's a challenge. Be. You know, yeah. last week when we talked about this, I had said to you that it would be Justice Alito on the Supreme Court mm -hmm. because he looks over Texas who would step in. That's exactly who stepped in today. And the point is he authored the Dobbs case that reversed Roe. So what would he do, the guy who did that? And what he did was he did stay the procedures through Wednesday night at just before midnight, 11.59. And so what he did was he put things back to the status quo because the stay issued by that lower uh, uh, Circuit Court of Appeals, the Fifth Circuit, they said, well, you can continue you to use the drug, but you can't do it by mail, yeah, and you mail. can't use it after uh, seven weeks, so all these other restrictions. Alito came in and said, no, 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 we're going back to the way it was until Wednesday night. That suggests that the court's going to have to move very quickly, or plans to move very quickly to resolve this issue. When will that be? We don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but what could also happen is by Wednesday night, he could go to the entire court to have a, a further state issue. Well, we talked before, but uh, just minutes after that ruling, you had this dueling ruling in yeah. Washington state here by a federal court uh, protecting access to Mifepristone uh, in 17 states where they sued, including Illinois. How is that playing in? So the, it was a total of 18 states. And, and what that mm -hmm. case said was that you can continue to use Mifepristone in those 18 states. Mm -hmm. In fact, they said, this should even be easier to get than it's been. Right. Well, the reason that doesn't have the controlling factor here is because what the Texas case does is it says this is, uh, this is illegal. You can't use this drug anywhere in the country. In that way, it would kind of overrule the Washington case. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's the Texas case the Department of Justice had to bring up, the one that says you got to get rid of this drug. As I said, it's clearly made its way to the Supreme Court. So we're going to see where mm -hmm. they take it. Something not so complicated. Mm -hmm. DNC coming to Chicago yeah. again. I remember 1996. Mm. Now we get to see it again. And I remember 1968. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And, you know, listen, this is great for Chicago. Uh, uh, you know, I, uh, on my show, I've got Brad Schneider this weekend and between, uh, between Duckworth and Pritzker uh, and Duckworth because she was part of the DNC committee mm -hmm. uh, and also um, uh, Mayor Lightfoot. You know, this is sort of the, the grand finale, certainly the Lightfoot's term, to bring that to the city next year. It'll showcase the city. What Duckworth said about this was we need to sort of bring back this sort of blue wall by having it in Chicago that brings you Michigan, it brings you Wisconsin. That's what they're after. Okay. Um, let's get it to the uh, the Trump hush money indictment. Um, the uh, Manhattan DA who brought the case against Trump uh, sued um, Jim Jordan because yeah. he was, as he put it, 
interfering in the investigation? How likely is he to, to block the subpoena? Well, what he's trying to do is get the court system involved. Look, Congress doesn't have jurisdiction over right. Alvin Bragg. I know they're, they're saying they do, and they're, they're making a lot of ruckus about this, but the bottom line is they don't. Alvin Bragg himself is not playing games here. So although he sent some letters to Jim Jordan saying back off and we're not using federal money to do what we're doing, uh, if we did, we'll let you know and we need to report to you. But I think Alvin Bragg just said, I've had enough of this. And so he, he files the lawsuit. Uh, we'll see whether a court chooses to get involved. But basically, it's sort of a, uh, you know, everybody got to stay in your lane. Congress, you need to let the DOJ do its thing. So we're going to see how all that plays out. But um, the tensions build. Okay, and now we've also got, the, there is so much going on yeah. this week. Mm -hmm. uh, the defamation lawsuit with Dominion versus and, Fox. Yes. Well, here's what's started. amazing about that. Listen, defamation is a very tough thing to prove. Narrow, right? Uh, yes, and, and it, it's really tough to, to win in those things. Very rarely do those cases happen. What's really unusual here, there is so much evidence on, on you know, that Dominion has found on Fox in terms of getting it turned over, literally, with all of the Fox hosts, many of them, saying, we, this stuff isn't true. Do we don't believe this stuff. And meanwhile, they're putting it on. So the judge actually ruled for it's called summary judgment, meaning we don't even have to let a, ju a jury hear this. That's how certain this is. No, nothing for a jury to decide when it comes to the fact that you lied, you did it, you knew. Mm -hmm. The judge, jury will not have to determine that. What will a jury have to do? The judge said, well, here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to decide that you did it with malice, actual malice, or a reckless disregard for the truth. I'm going to let a jury decide that. And I'm going to let a jury decide how much the damages are here. Now, Dominion is asking for $1.6 billion. Some would say, eh, Fox could write that check. Yeah, they could. <laughs> but punitive damages are involved here, too. And New York has no limit on how much the punitive damages could be. Fox stands to potentially get hit with billions and billions of dollars. Man, we'll see where that goes. Uh, let's bring it back now to uh, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas and uh, this new ethics violation. We knew about uh, the trips that came yeah. to light through ProPublica, and now we're finding out that there was a real estate deal with that same Harlan Crow. Um, do you think that this uh, it was a violation, and will it uh, negatively impact? In many ways, Rain Jackie, this is worse than, than the other thing. The other thing, Clarence Thomas is able to say, hey, look, I asked some friends when I started on the court, and they said, you know, don't worry about these perks you get from your friends. Uh, well, these are half-million-dollar perks and trips, yeah. but let's just give them that one. Let's just say, okay, you didn't know. Um, there is a rule that requires them to report real estate sales and dealings over $1,000. Mm -hmm. So, you and know, this, this is 130000 Exactly. Right? So there's sort of no excuse for not reporting this. Thomas uh, has been very quiet about this one, not speaking to it. And right now you have Sheldon Whitehouse in the Senate demanding that John Roberts do something about this. And if not, basically Sheldon Whitehouse says, then the Senate will have to step in and, and press some rules. Yeah, folks who have fun Googling old Supreme Court justices should Google the name <laughs> Abe Fortas. Uh, he's the last judge or justice uh, during the, um, the LBJ days uh, mm. who got booted off the court because of some relationships he had uh, with Becky. So, so it's possible. It doesn't come it's anywhere near what Thomas has done, to be honest with you. Okay. Tune in. Yeah. Can I give uh, you Sunday's guest? This Sunday, I'm going to tell you, we got Congressman Brad Schneider coming in, talking about what Congress is doing or not doing. Craig Su uh, Souter, who is an expert on conventions, going to give us a little history on the conventions. And uh, Deputy Mayor Samir Mayakar, who is the one really kind of handling for the mayor all these big projects, Southwest mm -hmm. and all that. He's going to give us an update as they all leave office about how that's going to go and what they expect to happen. Well, you're going to need so more than half not. an hour, aren't you? I, I'm asking for Can I have more than half an hour? <laughs> you take that up with the boss. Thanks, <laughs> Paul. Have a good weekend. You too.